Hey guys, Amazing Ampros here, picking back up with Final Fantasy IV The After Years and the Gathering portion of the Endgame. Here, our problem is, is that Evlon Castle is on fire, and Edge doesn't like his castle being on fire, so we're going to put the fire out. So, Golbez the Firefighter is going to come in and save the day. And the main strategy of firefighting is running from a lot of monsters while climbing towers on the sides of the burning castle. Nothing you can do about it, Rick, so just run for your life. And it doesn't really matter if Gritty or Luna die here, so I'm certainly not planning to take any real efforts to save them. Well, this is the one I need to do right now the elixir. Now, you can't get the other way yet. This could be painful. Or not so bad. You really never know. But this room is actually very important. Because while I was kind of just fooling around a bit, you can find that small tail hidden in the wall. And I guess I do want Riddy alive for this fight here. And here we go. Melt Golem 1. All the Melt Golems have basically the same strategy. And it's really straightforward. Golem kills him with Krizaki. Everyone else tries to help. They are going to be very successful. Golbez is just so powerful. And now let's do the same thing in the other tower. And that was wonderful how we missed all my parents. As you're going to quickly pick up as well, I've saved the more involved stuff for now, so... It's going to take me a bit more work to get back these last couple items. And none of this stuff's really immediately useful, so I'm just not going to get into the items in this tower until I can do it without the tower. Edge does basically no damage, but I'm really hoping he can steal like that. Hey, the 3x punch. And there goes the end. Golbez is so good. Let's get out of here before things get any more dangerous, and get to the throne room. It 
doesn't matter at all if he's alive or dead for this. He's gotta run. And apparently the women and children in the back waited, but the castle's about to fall. Edge decides the correct way to handle this is for Edge to fight if we're the one on one. Yeah, Edge is pretty stupid. At least he's brave. And there he goes. Good job, Edge. Oh, but we're not quite done being haunted yet. And here we have to try to defeat Rubiconte with just Edge and Rayman. Which is hard, he does not include Zolbez, we're pretty weak, but luckily this fight's also pretty strict. I'm not sure what, if anything, he has to steal, but I'd sure like to get him. Well, Rydia's going to do all the damage.
things are going downhill in there real fast. So, it'd be great if we could get there as soon as possible, team. Start off in here, pick up the Bolt Slicer, which is going to be a big weapon upgrade for Edge. Pop into the shops that are now available in F1. There's really only one item we need out of here. And it's in the other room. And that's the Assure. Which is also a very large weapon upgrade for Edge. Oh, I saw the fairy ball Shinobi here. Oh, no wonder he was so weak. Either way, these trivial details aside, Edge is now a much more powerful character. So we need to rearrange it and put it into the front row, and still keep the rest of our party functional. What we're just going to want to do is slide Golbez up there. We'll keep Golbez back, because we know we need to reduce the damage to Golbez, while letting everyone else perform the way they need to. So up here we can take the Silent Bell, the Remedy, all this good stuff. Well, I try to remember how to get back there. That wasn't so bad, and that red bag was certainly worth the trouble. And, again, while well, we could do the cave Bedlon now, I still don't have all the small tails, so it would require a second trip later anyway. So, I'm gonna head up to the Troya region and finish taking care of business. And I'm sorry this Lunar Fade cycling gets tedious after a while, but you save more time in battle fighting in the right Lunar Fade than you lose by sleeping in the bed four times in a row every time. So anyway, Troya is to the north of that block. Right around here. And there's a bunch of stuff in the forest. These guys are really scary. Luckily they didn't target Ed, so I can quickly get this out. Looking for a bronze out of that. And the strategy here is real simple. Byraga will one-shot them. And if you get a really low damage roll, it might not. And if it doesn't, one of your other characters can help out. Man, Golbez is really good. That was a really, really low damage roll. But everyone levels, and we learn a couple new moves we won't use, and we get a piece of equipment that has no use on the wear of. So let's loot the forest. Unfortunately, looting the forest is a little tricky. The only real way to do it is actually running across the whole forest. And they stole all of Edge's MP when they hit him with Osbo, so I'm going to have to manually run from this fight. That's actually a pretty unacceptable state of affairs, so I'm going to use a 10. This looter phase is kind of dangerous, but since these are just randoms I'm running from, I should be okay. Of 
course they all pile on edge when I say that. You ever have that feeling that sometimes games exist just to prove you wrong? I certainly get that feeling with this game right now. Holy random encounters, Batman. That's a lot of random encounters. in here, and once again in the case of two secrets, a small tail there, and a hidden passage here to get to the ice whip. The ice whip is another one of those no use I'm aware of pieces of equipment, but I've shown you where it is and I have it. I mean, I guess it does have one use I'm aware of. It is perfectly sellable. And unfortunately, the other small tail of this horse, instead of being in the extreme north corner, Green East border, so we have a bit of a trek ahead of us. All the way down here. And I don't remember which obscure corner it's in. Yet. There it is. Now there are five total small tails in the Troya region. Two were hidden in these obnoxious hidden areas of the forest. The other three are much simpler. One's in the castle, but we can't get to it until we take care of some other events. However, we can get to the one in the town right now. And then there's one in the Lone Stone Tavern, which is our next major destination. Well, let's start with the town. Here we can buy stuff if we want. I'm actually going to buy an elephant, though. I don't have any immediate plans for it, but it could prove useful. Note it's called an elfin bow and not an elven bow. I guess I wanted to be clear, this is not in-game level equipment for Chester or Natalia. It's a random piece of mid-game equipment for Final Fantasy. Game. Oh well. Well, you can't get any of the buildings here, you can still get to this little side area and get some pretty good items out of it. And it keeps wanting to put Edge as the on-screen character. And I'm sorry, Edge, as much as I like you, I just don't think you're a good choice for on-screen avatar. So now I only need a triple rest because I had to use that tent thanks to those very silly Dark Sages stealing Edge's MP. And now let's go to the Lodestone Tavern to get back Shiva. Sorry to spoil it, but process elimination to figure out which idol I had to be waiting for. Now the good news about Shiva is she's actually the least dangerous of the fights. The bad news is that she's behind a lengthy and dangerous dungeon. So right now I'm going to do what I did before. And I'm going to improve at your speed a bit. Very close, you know the gear. And Edge is one very fast ninja. And this place is no longer magnetic, so this is gonna be a really quick trip down. Recovery Rod is actually an improvement for Radio. I think it's only like one more intelligence, but every point counts.
And this encounter rate's worrying me, because while there's several save points I'll be exploiting to refill Edge's AP, if I just keep getting encounters to the maximum rate, I'm not going to make it that far. So far, I am definitely behind Snake on uh, Edge's AP.
again, speaking of warp strats, I'm just going to do that to trigger the warp point. And I'm going to go way out here for this treasure chest and warp back to that door. And this is my last spoke, so... Edge is about to go into remission as our party needs to quit smoking. Luckily, the safe point is not very far away, and there's no way they're going to deplete 2,564 gold bezels held for the time it takes me to get over there. It would be nice if at least one of the other characters survived, but it is very possible that won't happen. You also see the small tail there, which should indicate there's a real small tail somewhere in the area. I'm going to double tip one more time. And I could just rush to Shiva, but there's a couple more items I want to get. Like that small tail I was talking about. It's actually in this pile of bones right here. And then there's this treasure chest way out here. It contains diamond gloves. And with those, I now have a full set of diamonds equipment. I'm only using a couple of the pieces, but it's always good to have as much stuff as you can get. tricky strategy for Shiva here. And by a tricky strategy, I mean I'm going to hurt Shiva really badly, really quickly. Shiva hits pretty hard, but I really don't care. She's not going to deplete all of Gorbez's health. And I'm going to hit her with Fyraga twice. See you, Rydia. And that should be the battle. If you attack her again here, Shiva goes completely nuts on you, can easily wipe your party, and even if you endure, you're going to lose her forever. On the other hand, you can Faraga twice, stop, and you get Shiva back. Like I said, Shiva's actually the simplest fight. She's just best put off to last because she's at the bottom of this obnoxious dungeon. And now... Palum and Leonora are unfrozen. It looks like Palum's script was also frozen in place, as he's still ready to fight the mysterious girl. Or maybe he was just bluffing. Either way, we're all the way back in Troya now.
while Leonora declares she's coming, gives a terrible argument, but it doesn't matter. The two of you aren't going to do anything from this point in the game on anyway, so do whatever you want. Now, as for what does matter, let's see what we can do against Cecil with the whole party. Probably not very much. Oh, there goes Edward. Sid's also being a big helper right now. I guess Awakening didn't help Theodore. Wait, since when could Cecil do this? Oh, that's a problem for the three of us who are still alive. A problem I'll address later. Because for now, I can loot Troya Castle. Actually, there's nothing to loot in the castle itself, but you can get back here. And here is the final small tale of the Troya region. Wait, you want to check your inventory now and make sure you have 20 of them. The 21st is in Evlon Cave itself, right before the tail collected. So if you're at 20, you're on course to get all of the important items you're going to need to finish this game. And once again, it messed with our party, but it's an easier fix now than it used to be. So south back to Heblon, where we're going to finish up our side questing, and then we'll be ready to finish up the story. But again, this place is pretty dangerous. This has been a long segment already, so I think I'm going to break it here. I'll see you next time when I tackle the cave of Heblon and get my tails turned in.